Welcome to Health Watch, presented by Novant Health. I'm your host, June Baker. Our show features local physicians and health professionals discussing health topics of importance to local residents. Today, we will meet Dr. Max Beninati of Novant Health Surgical Associates and Dr. Cecilia Liu of Coastal Pediatric Dentistry. Then Shelburne Stevens, president of Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center, will share information on a new program for newcomers to the area. And finally, Keith Murray of Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center's Cardiac Rehabilitation Program will join us in recognition of Heart Month. Stay tuned to learn about valuable health topics with Health Watch. Thank you so much for coming back on our show today. It seems like you were just here. Well, thank you for having me again. It's a pleasure <laughs> to see you. Not long ago. That's right. But there may be a few viewers out there who didn't, who may have missed that show. So remind us um, about a little bit about yourself and your background. Okay. Well, my name is Max Beninati, Matthew, but I go by Max. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in New York, trained in New York, Pennsylvania, Jersey. Moved my way down to Maryland for a fellowship in uh, minimally invasive surgery. Afterwards, I came here um, to, to join the practice. And we're so happy you did, Max. Oh, you. <laughs> so when did you actually join uh, Novant Health Surgical Associates? It was in August of 2015, a little over three years ago now. Wow. Yeah. Awful time long. flies. Yeah, <laughs> time flies, huh? Well, tell me a little bit about your partners and your locations. I think you're kind of moving around. Right, we're expanding. So yeah. before I got here, there was Dr. Tillotson, which many people of course know, sure. as well as Dr. DeSandre and Dr. Scallion. I then joined Dr. Um, the group. And after me, so recently we brought on a new partner, um, Dr. Smith, who mm -hmm. you know, who's, who's great. The and he's been on our show, him. yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so after, after expanding the group, we also um, were able to expand where we cover. So. Our main office is in Bolivia, next to the Novant Hospital. Mm -hmm. In addition, we cover Leland, so I go to Leland. Um, we have an office in Calabash, right. and we recently picked up an office down in Southport. Nice. And I think uh, you have had a couple places in Southport. You are moving, mm -hmm. uh, you've moved to the new location down by the Dozier Hospital. Right, exactly, right next to the hospital there. Good location, um, doing the procedures there as well. Nice. So really um, covering the, the county. That's great for the folks who live down that way. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot we could talk about today, but um, really I wanted to focus specifically on hernias and hernia treatment. Mm -hmm. So first off, um, how common um, are hernias? Pretty common actually. Um, really? About 2% of the population, so that, that equates to almost 5 million people. Um, wow. It's, yeah, right. So <laughs> it's, it's very common for, for people to have one more commonly in males, specifically with the groin hernias, but anyone can get a hernia, um, oh. so it's very common. And what is a hernia exactly? The way I, I describe it to my patients is that we all have this strength layer called fascia that yeah. wraps around us like a corset. It's, it's the strength layer, it's on either side of the muscle, if there develops a hole in it or, or a defect in that strength layer, mm -hmm. that's the hernia itself. Something can bulge into the hernia, and those are the hernia contents, but the hernia itself is, is that is hole. The, oh. Yep. Most commonly in, in weakened areas, the, such Stomach. as the belly button, the groin, mm -hmm. um, those are the most common areas. Hmm. Well, what would a patient typically notice? What might be their first uh, symptom? Um, uh, as it becomes problematic, what, mm -hmm. what would that be? Most people come to me and say they developed a bulge. Oh. Either they were lifting something heavy or they've been doing a, a long life of heavy lifting, uh -huh. pushing, pulling, moving, getting their boat in the water, right. and they felt a bulge or a discomfort in, in wherever the hernia is located. Uh -huh. And that would be usually the presenting symptom either to the primary care or my office. Oh, 
Okay. Well, if someone's having those types of symptoms, um, what would you recommend? Do they call you or they call... They can either call me directly. Mm -hmm. If they mention it to their primary care doctor, yeah. um, that's, that's often a route because they're there for right. an annual checkup. And, and oh. most of the time it's not a all of a sudden it, it came on and I'm in severe pain and I need a surgeon now. Usually the presentation is more commonly, at least the elective ones, of it's been developing over mm -hmm. the past year, two years, 10 years, it's been getting larger. Mm -hmm. um, a hernia only expands over time. There's no, oh. no workout you can do. You can't lose weight to make it smaller. Um, you can't take a pill to make it smaller. So, so usually a patient would, would show up with, um, with those concerns and, and come to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so from there, what treatment options are available to a patient with a hernia? Okay, well like we talked about, there's no good way to fix it short of an operation. Um, back in sort of 20, 30 years ago, it was common to provide like a hernia truss. That's a common thing p patients ask me about where it provides a little, it's like a belt that provides pressure on the area. Okay. That doesn't fix it. It may temporize the issue. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time if somebody wants it truly repaired, you would need an operation, and, and that operation includes closing the defect or potentially um, applying a patch, a mesh. I describe it kind of like uh, oh, patching yeah. drywall to, to patients where you <laughs> provide this lattice that the body is able to grow into over time mm -hmm. and reinforce that strength layer that had the hole. Mm -hmm. um, are there options for surgery? I mean, can you do it robotically or? Yes, oh. absolutely. So. Um, a lot of the group, uh, my group, does things either open laparoscopic or robotic. Mm -hmm. Open procedures, um, sound, or they are just what they sound like. So you would come into the, the um, operating room mm -hmm. and there's a larger incision to fix the hernia. It's, it's a good repair to put the tissue back together and can either apply a mesh at that time um, above or below where you're sewing it together. Laparoscopically or robotically is, is the way that I usually prefer. I feel that I get a... Um, a, a better coverage of, of the defect. There's a few principles of hernia repairs and measurements and fancy mm -hmm. things in the papers that they talk about. So uh, laparoscopically, a couple small incisions. Mm -hmm. um, all of these options are usually same day type of surgeries. I see. There are larger hernias that don't always uh, allow you to go home the same day and stay mm -hmm. in the hospital for, for um, some treatment afterwards. How about recovery? Most of the recoveries that, that we do, if you catch it early enough, the hernia is small enough, you recover within two or three days, you're sore, but, but mm -hmm. each day's a little bit better. I tell people plan on about two weeks of, of feeling under the weather. Um, the most important thing is, is and each of us may have, in the group may have our, our um, different recommendations. Mine is usually plan on six to eight weeks of no heavy lifting, no stress on the abdomen, no strain, nothing that could potentially mm -hmm. uh, disrupt the mesh while it's healing into the body. Great. Well, great information. It sounds like it's a pretty common um, mm -hmm. malady and, and uh, kind of not a bad fix. It sounds like it would be quick. So mm -hmm. um, if patients would like to reach out and make an appointment, how might they do that? So they can, of course, call the office directly. Um, if, if they are established with their primary care doctor and would like the referral through that, that's great. Otherwise, the phone number is area code 910-721-4000. Um, if they ask for me, anyone in the group does them. If they ask for me, right. I'm doing a lot of these robotically. Um, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward. We're able to talk about it in good detail in the office and right. really make sure that they're comfortable with the options that, that it would best suit them as well as the repair Great. and recovery. Great. Well, thanks again for being here, and I look forward to hearing from you again Thank really you soon. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. to the show today, Dr. Liu. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's great. I can't wait to hear all about you and your practice. So before we start, let's talk a little bit about you and your background. Tell us where you yeah. went to school. Sure. Um, I actually grew up in North Carolina, awesome. which you know most people don't know. No, that's know. a surprise. <laughs> don't know that one. And I did my undergraduate studies at uh, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I actually moved into Wilmington and worked at a dental office for a few years. And it was there that I actually like found my love for dentistry. I had, did not know anything about it really? previous to that. Uh, and so that really motivated me to mm -hmm. go off and become a dentist and um, chase my career goal. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up going out to LA for dental school. Did 
four years there, the mm -hmm. one year in general residency in Hawaii, and then I did my pediatrics residency in Las Vegas for two years. Wow, you've been some great places. I have, <laughs> and now I've come back full circle. <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, so share a little bit about your practice. It's coastal pediatric, pediatric dentistry. Yes, I Tell am. me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we opened our doors in September of 2016, mm -hmm. and it was more, um, almost like an experiment to begin with, to really? see if the need was here for a pediatric dentist. Um, I was the first full-time pediatric dentist right. for Bunjik County, uh, so we were kind of curious as to why no one has done it before. Right. Uh, and the need is definitely here, uh, and our biggest goal is to provide a better access to care for the kids here. For the kids. Um, well, obviously there is a need because I understand you've added another pediatric dentist, yes, is that correct? Yes, uh, Dr. Nicole Ransbottom joined our team in July of this past year, mm -hmm. and it has been a fantastic addition to our team. That's awesome. Um, I don't know a lot about pediatric mm -hmm. dentistry, so tell me a little bit about the range of services that you offer there. So we really try to make it super easy mm -hmm. for the parents. and uh, <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yes, and so if they can bring all their kids at one time to make it easier for them for one trip. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of focus on prevention, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully trying to prevent any cavities from forming. But we also do a wide range of uh, treatments as well, anywhere from fillings, crowns, mm -hmm. um, extractions, anything that really the kids need, we try to provide it in the office. Mm -hmm. Well, I hear that you do a lot of things to make kids comfortable mm -hmm. um, at the dentistry office. So tell me some of those um, things that seem to work for you. So our biggest goal is to have the kids have fun and enjoy coming to the dentist. And I like the <laughs> best thing to, to hear is at the end, they're like, when are we coming back? We want to come back tomorrow because that's the best thing. So for kids, um, when they're afraid, a lot of it is that they're afraid of the unknown. Mm -hmm. So the first couple of visits, we spend a lot of time showing them everything oh. and really explain all the things in kids' terms, like, um, you know, the suction, we call it Mr. Thirsty, you know? <laughs> the, <laughs> the thing that sprays the water and air, it's the, you know, the squirt gun. So it makes it oh, yeah, more kid-friendly yeah. terms. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> and how, what do you call the drill? <laughs> <laughs> we used to call it the scrubby brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that that's cute. Um, and I understand that your furniture is kid size, right? Yeah. So we have the chairs that are um, a little bit smaller than an adult size chair. So then it doesn't seem so intimidating for them right. to sit into the chairs. And uh, I think you have some video uh, or equipment where they yes. can watch uh, video games or. So for each chair, we have a TV mounted up on the nice. ceiling, um, and it, they can watch movies, they can oh. watch the TV, or they can even play Xbox games. Oh, wow, that's so awesome. So it's, it's great for the kids to be uh, distracted that way, and right. then for the most part, they uh, just let us do our thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I understand that you do sedation dentistry, mm -hmm. is that correct? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have a couple options for sedation. Mm -hmm. um, the you know most conservative route would be the nitrous oxide, mm -hmm. which is commonly known as laughing gas. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also offer oral sedation, <clears throat> similar to giving like a child something like Valium. Um, um, and then we have full sedation, um, where we can do general anesthesia either you know here at the hospital or in the office. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that you're also on the medical staff at uh, Novant Health Brunswick Medical mm -hmm. Center, is that correct? Yes. And so um, you do procedures here in the operating rooms. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me what kind of a procedure might be the appropriate procedure for an operating room? Sure. So probably the average age of kids that we see in the operating room is going to be um, around three to four years old. Uh, um, oh. Unfortunately, um, some kids do develop cavities really early on, mm -hmm. um, and to safely and have them be comfortable, then we'll just do all the fillings or crowns or anything that needs to be done all at one time. I see. And then it's then it's easier for the child. They don't have to worry about um, having a bad experience, mm -hmm. um, and then it just makes it more comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. And would that be under general anesthesia? Yes. So they they are completely sleeping the whole entire time, and they're everything is done when they wake up. <laughs> that must be nice. I think I'm going to have to try that. 
Um, well, what are some of the tips that um, you like parents to know as they work with their children on dental hygiene and what mm -hmm. have you? Uh, what would be um, some of those tips? I think the most common thing that I hear parents um, when they come in for the first time, they, they don't realize um, that they can start using fluoride toothpaste very early oh. on. So as soon as a child's tooth comes in, they can be using uh, toothpaste with fluoride. Very little, small amount, and of course in the office we'll show them the exact mm -hmm. amount they can use safely for their child. Uh -huh. And then so that way we can um, educate really on prevention and stress on that. In talking with the parents of the children that you see, do they have any particular concerns um, about their children's teeth or, or if they're doing the right things? Right. Um, the biggest concern that I find out from parents is like, how do I get my child to brush their teeth? And so that's the like, one, number one question that comes into the office most of the time. And what I really like to recommend is if the child does well in a reward system, mm -hmm to get a calendar. Uh, each time their child brushes their teeth when they're supposed to morning and night, they can get a sticker and for each day of the week. And oh. if they have however many stickers, like five to six of them in a row, then they can get a oh. prize at the end of the week. So it, it motivates the child mm -hmm. um, to do their uh, habits at home really good. Right, yeah. Well, I know that your practice, Coastal Pediatric Dentistry, is very involved in the community, and I think throughout the year there are a few events that you all hold. Uh, tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, we love doing events for the community, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the one that focuses on the kids is Give Kids a Smile, and that's usually in February. Mm -hmm. um, we will provide free services for the kids that day, mm -hmm. uh, and that event is by appointment only. So. The, we can uh, do free cleaning, x-rays, exams, and sealants as well. Wow. And then there's also another big uh, event that we do in May for Dentistry from the Heart. Right. And that's for adults and kids. Right. And that's um, a great event. I know we at Novant Health participate in that mm -hmm. and offer free screenings, um, health screenings. Um, but it's always so great to hear the people come out and say, oh, I'm so thankful that this is available to me. They have no insurance or um, just don't have the ability to pay. And so what a great blessing that yes. is. And so, so many thanks go to the Coastal Pediatric mm -hmm. Dentistry for offering those services. So it's been great to have you here. Tell our viewers how they can schedule an appointment with you. Uh, got a couple of ways, but the best way is to go to the website. Um, really? Yes. So we see smiles.com. They can find our phone number and also request appointments through the web directly through the website. Great. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have you back sometime and yes. bring your partner with you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next event. That sounds great. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Cece. Shelburne, I'm so happy to have you back on the show today. It's always such a good time when you're here. It's good to be back, June. We always have fun. Um, but today, I'm hoping we can focus on something new that I heard about. Um, I think you're offering uh, something to the newcomers of the area. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Um, since Brunswick County is the fastest growing county in North Carolina, That's right. got a lot of people moving here and new to the area. And so we're going to have a newcomers event um, at the hospital just so we can introduce them to what Navant Health is and what we offer. That's an awesome idea. Now, um, are they going to be every month? They'll be every month, the third Tuesday of every month at 3 p.m. here at the hospital in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. And um, people can call um, to sign up if they want to. It's not required. Mm -hmm. And that number is 910-721-1460. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit about what newcomers can expect when they come to the event. So we'll have a little information session to begin with. Mm -hmm. So um, we can learn a little bit about each other, learn where they're from. Yeah, um, it's we'll, always fun to it, learn where people come from. It is and we'll talk about the services that we offer here at the hospital mm -hmm. as well as our clinics here in Brunswick County, both primary care and specialty clinics, so that people will learn the services that are offered here mm -hmm. for them. Uh, will they have the opportunity to meet leaders at the hospital and such? The sessions will be led by leaders here at the hospital Good. and the medical group. Um, there'll also be opportunity for tours if they choose to, but coming up with flu season, we may opt not to have a full tour. We don't want to get well, people sick. 
Yeah. Um, but also, we'll have an opportunity for people if they want to sign up to find a primary care physician. I was, I was we'll going to ask that. We will have people here to sign them up for those appointments. Because mm -hmm. I, I think that'll probably be one of the first questions. I need a primary care. It is the first uh, question. So we'll that would be great. Um, how about if you've lived here for a while, but you still aren't real familiar with Novant Health? Are they welcome? All are welcome. If you've lived here for 30 years, you're more than welcome to come to one of these sessions. <laughs> you can never learn too much, right? That's right. <laughs> Um, again, you said it would be held in the cafeteria, meeting room? Mm -hmm. There's a classroom right off of our cafeteria, and if we have more than we can fit in there, we'll just take over the cafeteria and do it in there in the dining area. Mm -hmm. And again, it's at 3 p.m. the third Tuesday of every month. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one it will be held uh, this month. Mm -hmm in February, I think it's the 19th, the 19th is and correct. then again in March 19th, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So. Um, I think that's a, a great opportunity for uh, the people uh, moving here from other areas, just may not be familiar with the Novant Health name. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's going to be great for them. If um, they want more information or to register, they can call that number again, the 721-1460, And. Um, what would you like the newcomers to know most about Novant Health before they visit? Just, um, we provide excellent care here for this community. We're an excellent community hospital and we have some great providers here and we have excellent team members and we're here to serve the community members in Brunswick County. Yeah, and it's convenient. Absolutely. Close to home. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's all we have for today. I, I just so appreciate you telling us about that new um, service. I think that'll be a, a really great thing for the residents of Brunswick County. And I look forward to coming back because every time you come, you've got something new to tell me. Always. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> great. so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, I appreciate you having me. Great. Well, I want to learn a little bit about you and, and your background, so sure. let's share that with our viewers. Well, I'm from the Midwest, although many can't t discern my accent difference no. than from the local area. Uh, I went to Indiana University. I'm an exercise physiologist by trade. I uh -huh. have a director's degree, which people don't know, know what that is, but it's a long story, but basically it's a PhD minus the research project. Gotcha. So I spent a lot of time in school. Hmm. Yeah, that is a long time in school. <laughs> now, 12 years of post-public education. Wow. Oh. Well, um, when did you join Novant Health? April of 2011. 2011. Wow. So I've working on almost to eight years here. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, tell me what your role is at Novant Health. I'm ranked as a clinical exercise physiologist. I work in the cardiac rehabilitation program as the exercise physiologist in the program. So we're an ongoing behavior modification program for those people suffering from heart disease. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. I work with those patients down there on a daily basis. Mm. Yeah, I bet that's a hard job. Um, well, hard in some behavior ways. Modification Behavior modification is, is always getting people, you know, yeah. people change in people are, right. are things that are kind of like oil and water. You know, it's, it's a really difficult thing to get people to make those changes. And some are more willing than others. Sometimes they're a little shocked with how much they may have to change. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the patients that come to us at least are willing to listen. So, right. and, yeah. uh, and they, they want to get better. They do want to get better. Yeah. Um, they, they are tired of not feeling good. Well, I hear that you have a wonderful cardiac uh, rehabilitation program. So, tell me how that program works. How do you get started in it? How do you? How do they find you? Do you have to have a doctor's referral? Right. It's going to initiate from a doctor's referral. So, it's kind of a rough entrance criteria. You have to have some oh, version really? of heart disease, and for most people, this is going to emerge because of complaints that they're having mm -hmm. and they share with their doctors and then resulting tests mm -hmm. and ends up getting it down to the, and there's a classic set of symptoms and problems that would show up on either with what the, the patient experiencing or what the test results are mm -hmm. that come to some form of a heart disease diagnosis mm -hmm. and then the doctors will order that patient into our program. So frequently we get the name initially from um, New Hanover Regional uh, Healthcare 
medical center uh, because the patients have either gone undergone some sort of procedure there. Procedure. Mm -hmm. So they're and the program there will forward those names out because they tend to farm out to the local communities, people who go there for the surgeries and the mm -hmm. procedures. And, uh, and then we'll contact a physician's doctor mm -hmm. to, to sign their order form so that they can get into the program. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I think of cardiac rehabilitation, I think of folks who have had a heart attack, but they may not have always had a heart no, attack. Is that correct? No. Actually, in, in our case right now, most of the patients haven't. They don't really want to get to the stage of a heart attack right. because that's when it's... So this the, kind of would prevent that if they... We're kind of open that. Yeah, you know, we really encourage pa patients not to delay mm -hmm. warning signs that they might be getting because a lot of times there will be many warning signs and if they wait too long, they can't actually get to a point where they have the heart attack. We'd rather them go see their physician before, before. that stage mm -hmm. so the physician can perform the necessary tests to, to confirm that it is heart disease and they can have the intervention prior to having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that's. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because it is Heart Month. It's February. It's Heart Month. So I'd like to talk about the health heart uh, or heart disease prevention. Okay. So, can you share a few of the top tips um, that you recommend? Exercise as the exercise for the guys. <laughs> so what I'm always trying to promote. Uh, we try to get people to exercise daily if we can. Uh, we'll take four or five days a week. Now our program is three days a week, but early on, well, if, as long as they're not having any problems, we'll mm -hmm. try to encourage them to start picking up a day or two outside mm -hmm. of the program. But exercise on a regular basis, and they can start off with a simple uh, walking program. We do try to encourage that it progresses. It doesn't stay at the casual mm -hmm. any longer than it has to. But um, so exercising, and of course, we're going to try to encourage healthier eating. And many people have heard uh, a lot of information from a variety of sources, That's enough true. on healthy eating, that they really have a fairly good idea of yeah. what is uh, among the healthier things to pick from. So, and then a uh, the third area is we try to encourage people to deal with stress management issues because mm -hmm. we do live in kind of a complicated culture. So yeah, if we they do. can kind of learn to weather things a little differently and that's so that they're, they're just trying to keep the stress loads down as much as possible. So those are the three main areas we kind of we kind of try to promote some changes in. How about smoking? Smoking is a no-no. <laughs> it is the, still the number one lending cause. It's preventable to mm -hmm. the heart disease. So, And there really isn't any such thing as a safe cigarette. Um, given the number of people who actually have problems with um, dying to smoking related reasons that don't smoke, uh, there's just, it's a matter of how much a person can tolerate. Mm -hmm. So we just really encourage the zero nicotine use. Mm -hmm. um, quickly, when, if I have a symptom, how do I know whether I should go to the emergency department or call my doctor? Well, if you're having things like uh, say you're gardening and you're hoeing a, a row to get the, the weeds out mm -hmm. and you start to feel some ache, say in the mid-back, it doesn't have to be there, there's a number of places it could show up, uh -huh. but it goes away when you stop. But every time you go back to this, it's, it's happening again. So this is something that would, you would want to talk to your doctor about. Mm -hmm. If you're at home and you suddenly say have that classic heart sign where you feel like there's this crushing pressure, pressure on your chest mm -hmm. and especially if you're getting like sweaty or something this is more of a crisis thing that would be more of an emergency call so if you feel like it's an emergency you don't want to go to your doctor because your doctor wants you to go to the emergency room, room first <laughs> yeah, right. so if it's just kind of a mild thing that's kind of coming and going but it's it seems to be progressing then it's like a what it'd be a complaint that might cause you to schedule right. to see your doctor. Right. So it doesn't feel like it's a crisis situation. Mm -hmm. Then you can you can start that conversation yeah. with the doctor. And when then. in doubt, go to the emergency. When in doubt, I mean it might be acid reflux because that's how it feels. And yeah. if yeah. they treat it for that and you're good, that's a lot simpler than waiting it out and finding out that yeah it was a heart attack and you've blown out half your left ventricle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, all good information. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Uh, I've welcome. learned a lot, and uh, I think we need to have you back because I have a lot more questions. Okay, very good. Great. Thanks, Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you for
for tuning in to ATMC TV's Health Watch. I hope this information was beneficial for you and your family. If you have any questions or topics that you would like to see discussed on a future show, please email them to atmctv at atmc.com. Visit novanthealth.org for more information on Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center, local doctors, and general health information. Thank you again for joining us today. Be sure to join us next time for Health Watch on ATMC TV.